You are welcome back from that quick timeout. Thank you very much, Sagi, for that detailed update on the condition of the road right there in Azara community on the Abuja Kaduna Express um, Expressway. Now we're going to be going through um, um, the dailies and we'll look at the stories that made it to the um, front pages of the dailies, starting off with um, Daily Trust newspaper. Right there in front, the headline says, MPOX spreads to 19 states. Cases now 40. Lagos raises alarm over new variants from African nations. Federal government intensifies surveillance. U.S. donates 10,000 vaccine doses to Nigeria. Then um, still on the front page there, federal government yet to pay us promised wage award. Pensioners cry out. And in Niger states, we see there herders, farmers clash, claims five lives in Niger, and Kano government seeks assembly's approval for nine, $99 billion Naira supplementary budget. Still um, right down below, no timeline yet for Oro Sanya's report implementation, says the federal government. So going to the top left, Labour Party in fresh crisis as OT summons emergency neck meeting. NFF confirms German Lababadia as Super Eagles coach. And finally, there on the headline, NIREC urges action against killings and abduction. So those are the stories we have for you on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, move on to the Nigerian Tribune. And it's leading with the major story and killings. Banditry, Khan, Sultan, urges federal government says recent bloodshed alarming to other story fuel crisis lepers in lagos resort to drinking contaminated water health expert one of public health crisis ogun border community six fg's intervention over violent attacks an lp moves to sanction governor ot sets up disciplinary committee to other stories 45 years after ex rep member refunds federal government students loan of 1200 with 3.1 million no timeline for rsi's report implementation federal government and then post states gear up for emerging threats as us donate 10000 doses of vaccine we now have joining us in the studio uh, we have, we have uh, joining us via zoom this time Mr. Ben Sherman, former director of news at the Voice of Nigeria. Good morning. Morning, Sunday. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, I, I want to applaud your patience as we had to take that update from Kaduna Road, which I'm sure is a road that is very critical uh, to and of, of critical concern and importance to you, given uh, especially uh, that you're also from that part of the country. But uh, give us a sense. Um, we are seeing how the, the spread of uh, MPOS has got into about 19 or 20 states and death row has now hit over 40. Uh, what's your sense of how we seem to be managing this uh, health crisis, the way it seemed to be growing without uh, so much grip on how, how to stop it? Yes, uh, Sunday, you see, uh, when you talk about Kaduna Road and all that stuff, I, I remember that uh, at the point, government said they were going to borrow pensioners' money to take care of critical infrastructure such as this. Uh, so that's by the way, but your question has to do with uh, MPOC. Uh, you see, honestly, one is a uh, kind of stuff that uh, issues of this nature that America is sending 10,000 vaccines to assist the uh, over 200 million people in Nigeria, a drop in the ocean, one would say. But all the same, what are the Nigerian scientists doing? When we had uh, COVID-19, at the point, some money was were a kind of sent to some, uh, some research institutions to do what you call extensive research on, uh, on, uh, on um, uh, various ailments, diseases in, in, in Nigeria. And what is the result today? So we ought to have been seeing that something has been done via that one. But talking of MPOC, the way it is spreading says a lot. When government is saying there's also surveillance, how does this surveillance uh, look like? When indeed we should be talking about um, awareness campaigns, these are the symptoms. This is what to do. This is what to avoid. And this is what to ensure that you don't have this. 
Uh, so uh, government has to do quite a lot, and you have the media. Uh, what is it that government has a, a kind of uh, spelled out to ensure that um, uh, Nigerians are safe? You have the media that the government should patronize. Uh, release this to the media. We are even the, the broadcasting organizations of Nigeria. You see that uh, some of these things will be overcome. But one is this top that government is not looking at these angles. All right. Thank you very much for that. Now, before the, the before we before you responded to this now, you stated something about government saying they were going to borrow pensioners' money to fix the road. Now, let's talk about the pensioners. Right here under the Daily Trust, they have come out that the federal government is yet to pay them promised wage award. They're crying out. And we also see several states where pensioners come out to complain that they are being owed and they're not being paid. What does this mean about how the government is treating people who have, you know, put in their service years into, you know, working with the federal government and they've served and are not getting the pension that they contributed to in return incidentally you are asking that question to a pensioner i've finished service militariously and i've not received a dime and i'm into two years into retirement some people are five years into retirement they are not seeing anything and um, one is rather taking above like i said earlier that government was thinking or thinking that they could borrow money that is redundant. You call them um, uh, pensioners' money redundant. These are people, some retired without houses, some retired, they have uh, small children in school, they can't pay. Some are tenants, they, they, they owe as much. In fact, each time they, 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 they complain to landlords, they have to shift the goalposts for them to ensure they live uh, lives that are reasonable. And talking of reasonable life of pensioners, what, how can it be reasonable? In this kind of a situation, you go to the market, even workers, what are their complaints? Transportation, what are the workers' complaints? Those who still earn salary. Not to talk of those who are not earning anything. The, uh, those who have high blood pressure, those who have all sorts of ailments here and there, how are they taking care of themselves? There are some people that must take tablets on a daily basis. Some get injected on a daily basis. How are they taking care of uh, by, by government? And when elections are, are around the corner, you now see people bringing all sorts of blueprints. These are the, the, the things they will do for pensioners, for workers, for roads, for health, for education, for security or insecurity, uh, agriculture, food security or food insecurity. What is it that they have to do? Uh, we are so used to just talking and nobody is walking the talk. Uh, so we talk and talk and talk. And that's what uh, we are best known for. Politicians, even when they've won the election, they still talk as if they are campaigning to win office. They've forgotten that they are now supposed to be giving Nigerians what you call dividends of democracy. Good roads, security, food, education, friendship, so to speak. Uh, they forget about all of these uh, uh, things they promised Nigerians. All right. Um, talking about security, the, uh, the Daily Trust is also reporting that um, five lives were lost yesterday to another farmer headers clash. At the same time, the Sultan, uh, uh, among other very important institutions, are calling on the federal government to put a stop to this incessant killing. We have seen uh, an upsurge in, in this killing lately, leading to the death of a very prominent uh, district head. Um, what's your impression about this clash? You know, seeing the, the resurgence of of, of this clash across several key states in Nigeria. Yeah, you see, the attitude of government usually is that of condemn, condemn the dastardly act. We condemn this heinous crime. We, these, these perpetrators will be brought to book. You begin to imagine Sunday how many people have been tried today because of uh, things of this nature. And uh, it's good that the Sultan is talking. It's good that Khan is talking. Jamaatul Nasser Islam. All of them are talking. Everyone is concerned. But what is the concern of government? Do recruitment. And if you think you can't do any recruitment, why don't we okay simply take the humble pie? Because the fact that a giant is shaking hands with 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 uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with a cripple does not make the giant a cripple or, uh, or, or a dwarf. But what am I trying to say? Let government. Let us begin to talk with those who are ca carrying out these heinous uh, crimes. What really are their, 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 their demands? Let's sit down and discuss. If what we can get by fighting, uh, we can get by, by sitting down and discussing, so be it. Uh, so that, uh, incidentally, you see, we are fighting a war. Nigeria is fighting a war against itself. The enemy is within. So how do you identify this enemy? 
And so let us discuss. Truly, I, I, I am of the opinion that we should begin to, to discuss. And in discussing, that does not mean it's weakness. There is what you call the carrot and stick approach to, to some of these issues. If you think that fighting, fighting and massive killing will not resolve the, the, the situation, why is it that we cannot at this point begin to, uh, to, to talk to people, people of conscience? The Sultan is talking. Sultan should, should I mean, there are some people who must uh, respect him. There are people who must fear him. You come to the, the uh, to Khan, for example. There are some religious people, leaders that people will have to listen to so that we come out. Who are the people hiding somewhere? Who, who, who are these people? Whether they are Ipovo, whether you go to Niger Delta earlier, how do we resolve this crisis and ensure that Nigeria lives peacefully where there is this, this respect for life and sanctity uh, for life so that we live uh, and, and, and progress? All right. Um, we understand that the president will be jetting out to China any moment from now, and we know how much a Chinese company is practically strangulating our assets um, across a number of European countries. Do you think that the issue of Zhenzheng, uh, Chinese company, and the seizure of our assets should be on the table when the president meets uh, President Xi Jinping? I think if President Tinubu does not go to China and, and talk about uh, this matter, when he goes, he can stay there for, for some time so that uh, we also begin to find out what we can do here in, in Nigeria. Uh, because a situation where some state governors will go into agreements, you are not involving the federal government, you are not involving the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in terms of negotiation, only for Nigeria to enter into this kind of embarrassment global embarrassment i think it, it, it is not uh, wanted uh, he went to france or uh, something happened that the france we are told is, is getting uh, better but to what extent can we continue to have this kind of a thing and when investors come into this country uh, we ought to know who really they are and that's why we're talking about expatriate quarter who are the people not just somebody who wear suits with one night nice tie well polished uh, polished shoes who will come and uh, meet you you just feel that this is an investor yes we are looking for investors here and there but you yeah. also look at the investment climate in uh, is it right enough with all this insecurity so right. yes when Ch uh, the, the Sinobu goes to china that should be at the front burner and in doing that i ought to i mean when i say i am speaking like a nigerian we ought to know where state governors have quietly sneaked out of this country, went and signed all sorts of uh, agreements all that right. are endangering the Nigerian all right. population. Thank I, you I so much, that, sir, there uh, for that insightful. That you know, he always brings issues. fresh perspective to um, the newspaper review. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Ben Sherman. Well, unfortunately, we've come to the end. Rather, fortunately, unfortunately, we've come to the end of Daybreak today. My name is Lilian Ogazi. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, I'm Sunday Michael Ogu. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you being part of this program. Sport 360 is next. Please don't go away.